Alright, hey you guys, so I am here to do the long-awaited review of the Docatot Deluxe and Grand. So, if you do not know me, my name is Sydney. My husband Eric and I have this channel here where I do mostly mommy videos with the occasional vlog. It's been a while since I've done a vlog, but the occasional vlog. And in the future, I plan on implementing different types of videos, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoy this video and you would like to see me again, please subscribe and then push the little bell notification because as of right now, I do not have a set recording schedule, so it will just notify you when I upload so you can see me when I upload. And I also post over on Instagram and Twitter when I upload a video, so you can go follow us there. Links to both of those are in the description below. And I think that is all I for the intro. I'm really bad at intros. Intros are one of the things I'm like terrible at doing, so I'm sorry. But let's just get into the actual reason that you guys are here, which is not an intro. It is a review of the Docatot. So I was actually sent both the Deluxe and the Grand for my honest review. And so I am now going to review what I think about both of them. The Deluxe is the smaller Docatot. It's for babies aged newborn to eight months I believe and I think it's up to like 20 to 22 pounds and then the grand is for children who are eight months to I believe three years old I can't remember the actual age for the grand but my son is about to turn four and he still fits in his perfectly so and the person I talked to over at Duck Tut, their child was five and they were still in it. So it'll last a, a while as long as you don't have a giant child, <laughs> it'll work. Allison is now four months old and she still fits in the deluxe fine. And Levi, like I said, is four and he still fits in his grand just fine as well. So as far as the review of the Duck Tut, I will start off with the deluxe. So being completely honest with you guys... My review of the Deluxe, it wasn't going to be bad because I don't think badly of the Docatot Deluxe. It was just Allison did not like it. So I've been using it since she was born on and off, like here and there, because I used it a lot when she was first born and she wasn't ever really a fan. There were a few times that she would actually sleep in it for an extended amount of time but it wasn't like every night I'd put her in it, she'd go right to sleep. It was one of those, she either had to be on me to sleep, snuggled up next to me to sleep, or moving sometimes. So I have the rock and play that rocks itself automatically. She would sleep in that sometimes, but usually once she was up to feed, she was not going back in there. She was not going in anything. She wanted to sleep on me. So that's how she was in the beginning. And that started to get better. But still, then she got pretty into the rock and play. Not perfectly. Like, she didn't love it. But she would sleep in it. But she wouldn't sleep in the dock top. Because then she had the sleep association of movement to sleep. She wouldn't sleep stationary and a dock is obviously stationary. So the rock and play is what she sleep in at night and we ended up getting a swing for her to take naps in during the day. And that was mostly she slept the best in a swing and then the rock and play was at night and she was so tired by nighttime she would sleep in it. But we had a hard time getting her to go back in the rock and play when she would wake up to eat at night. So then fast forward a little bit more, she now sleeps in her rock and play perfectly fine. I no longer have to always breastfeed her to sleep. I can feed her and then get her ready for bed, swaddle her up, and then it started off, I would just hold her next to me with a pacifier in her mouth. She'd go to sleep, I'd put her into the rock and play. But now... When I swaddle her up and I try and get her to just lay next to me with her pacifier to go to sleep, she kind of like stirs and moves and gets kind of irritated. This is at night, by the way, not during nap times, but she gets kind of irritated. And I'll put her in her rock and play and she'll be asleep within like a minute. So she's really not needing me to fall asleep anymore. But for naps, she's a little more 
clingy to go to sleep with now. But back to the reason we're here, the docketot, where this all comes in. So I was going to make this video earlier this week. I was going to record the video. It's Thursday. I was going to record it Tuesday. And I decided to wait a few more days and to try the docketot again because I haven't tried it really since for her to sleep in. I've used it as a place to set her safely, like in the living room or whatever, so I could like help Levi with something or pick some stuff up, so on and so forth. And she never hated it. She'd never sit there and like scream and cry. She would just kind of be content being there. But I haven't tried to sleep her in there, to put her to sleep in the dock tot. And so actually, that's not true because I think it was last week or the week before I got her to fall asleep in the dock tot kind of elevated up so I had a pillow under it. I got her to fall asleep in it for maybe 20 minutes and then she woke up but still that was a big deal because she has not been falling asleep without movement. She is very sleep associated to movement. The rock and play has to be on at night, the swing has to be on during her naps and that's that's just how she has to sleep and so she slept in it for 20 minutes and I was like hmm. And I think that is what made me think Tuesday to wait to record the video until later in the week and to try the Doc Tot again. Because I thought about that and I didn't want to just say like the Doc Tot didn't work for me and not give it another chance when she made progress that day. So yesterday I turned on her white noise up in the living room. I swaddled her up in her Ollie swaddle. I put her in the Doc Tot. I gave her her pacifier. And she loves muslin blankets, like touching her face. So I put one next to her face so she could feel it there. And I just walked away. Maybe two minutes later, two to three minutes later, and she was asleep. And so I moved the blanket. I don't leave it up by her face. I moved the blanket down. And I put her pacifier in a safe spot because she spits it out when she goes to sleep. And she took an entire nap in her dock tot on the couch yesterday which was, it may not sound like a big deal, but it was a huge deal because she does not sleep stationary ever. And so I decided today to try it again, make sure it wasn't a fluke. And I swallowed her up, put her in a dock tot. This time I had to lay next to her for a little bit because she was being really fussy today and pretty clingy. So I laid next to her, within a minute she went to sleep. And she took a pretty long nap in it today as well. She woke up. I fed her again. I laid her back down because she wasn't ready to wake up. I think she was just hungry. And she went back to sleep. And she took another full nap in the dock tot. So, I am going to change what I was going to say about the deluxe. Kind of. So, it seems as though Allison is starting to like the dock tot. Which is super exciting because I love the dock tot. I love how it looks. I love that it's a safe spot for her to sleep, that she won't roll around. I love that I could co-sleep with her in it. And that she will be safe. She'll be okay. And so, and I can, I don't have to worry about like, I think it was a week ago or a week and a half ago. Our power line got kind of snipped a little bit because AT&T was putting in their new lines in our neighborhood. They cut our power line a little bit and it rained for a few days. And so the water started getting into the cords and kind of like short circuiting them. And our power had to be shut off one day for them to give us like a generator to use over the weekend. And there was this chance that the generator could go out and we wouldn't have power again until Monday. And so that was just super stressful with having a baby that has to be moved to sleep because she wouldn't be able to have her rock and play or her swing if there's no power. And then that Monday they came back and shut the power off again and it was off for like two hours. And she couldn't sleep because there was nothing to move her. And so it was all just really stressful and I'm it really made me realize I don't want to have a baby who is so attached to movement, to sleep. I didn't want it in the first place. She was just so difficult to get to go to sleep. And now we just were here and I'm really wanting to 
like wean her out of it and take away those sleep associations now that she doesn't need to be nursed to sleep because that was one of her associations she doesn't need me to hold her to go to sleep which is another one of her associations so she broke off those two herself and I'm really wanting to break off the needing to be moved that's one I want to go away she's four months old she's not a newborn anymore she's not going to fit in the rock and play forever she's not going to fit in the swing forever and I don't want to have to rock her to sleep every single time. And it's to the point to where, like, if it turns off, like, the rock and play, it has a six-hour timer. So in that six hours, she will usually wake up when the rock and play turns off. And I'm, I, I just want all of it to stop. And I want her to be able to just be laid in a pack and play and go to sleep. So when she started to like the dock tot, it really excited me because... She likes it, and sure, it might be another thing that she needs to be weaned off of, but they have the grand, and I really do want to get her the grand now that she's starting to like the deluxe. I would like to get her the grand as well, because it's it's so convenient, especially when she likes it. Like, she is such a picky baby. She knows what she likes. She knows what she doesn't like, and I don't... I don't see her getting too much easier in the future. And so she likes the Doc Tot. Like I said, Levi's almost four and he's still in his grand. So if I had the grand from, she still fits in her deluxe fine, but once she gets a little bit bigger, once I have the grand, she can be in that for a long time. I won't have to worry about that breaking them off of it thing. It could be something that she feels comfort in. And so I'm really excited that she is starting like the Doc Tot and her deluxe. But I will say, like the beginning of this showed, the Doc Tot, in my opinion, is not for everybody. It's not for every baby. Not every baby is going to love it like others do. I do not not believe the parents who say like the Doc Tot was a lifesaver. Their baby loves it, has loved it from birth. It changed their lives. Like, I believe that. I believe that those things are true for those babies. I just have a baby who's very picky and was just liked movement to sleep. But I do love my Doc Tot at the same time. If I had to have bought, like, if I would have bought it and she liked it as much as she has, I would have been a little upset because, I mean, Doc Tots aren't cheap. So I would say don't down it. Do not say like, I'm not going to get it. It's a waste of money because I don't believe that. I don't believe it's a waste of money if your child loves it. And you never know if your child loves it or is going to love it unless you try it. But what I would say is just, I would wait until your child is born to get it. I would wait to see how they are, what they like, what they don't like. And then if they don't need movement to sleep or they don't want to sleep in a crib or in a bassinet or anything like that and it's too empty and too stark for them and they want the comfort of the dock talk kind of like cuddling them, get the dock talk. So it will be 100% worth it for that child and they will love it. But if you do have a baby that likes movement, maybe wait until the newborn stage is over because it, it seems to me that's when that need for movement is the strongest and then after that it's really just habit it's not really needed anymore and maybe just wait for that and then get the doc tot when your baby is around like four months old four to four and a half months old get the doc tot as long as they're not huge because if they're too big like levi he wouldn't fit in the deluxe at four months old he was huge <laughs> so size it the way that you need it whether it's the deluxe or the grand and then get the doc tot so, personally with the Deluxe, I do think it's worth it for some people. I am so happy that she likes it now, and I plan on continuing to use it and continuing to implement it into her schedule, and it's going to be my way of breaking her from needing to be moved. I've already come to that conclusion. It is going to be my weaning tool. I'm going to wean her off of movement to sleep using the Doc Tot, and I'm so excited to do that because... Honestly, having a baby who needs to be moved to sleep is so stressful. If you're out somewhere else, like when we go to Eric's parents' house, I don't have a moving implement at Eric's house, Eric's parents' house. I have 
a rock and play, but it's not one of the ones that move or vibrate or anything. It just is stationary and you have to rock it yourself. And so when we're there, she won't sleep there. And she's not really into being held to sleep anymore. I mean, she will, but she's not, she doesn't like it. Like, she will basically have to be exhausted to get to that point. So, if I had, if she likes the Dockatot to sleep, I could bring that to his parents' house and have her sleep in it. In a place where I can see her and I know she's safe, but she's also comforted. And bringing a little Dockatot or I mean, it's like that big, is a lot easier than trying to bring like the rock and play with the cord. And because I mean, they're big, that's a big object to have to bring places. So I'm really looking forward to weaning her off of it using the Doc Tot. But I will warn you that the Doc Tot is not for all babies in the beginning for sure. And maybe some babies not at all, I don't know. Oh yeah, and another thing I meant to add about her not being the biggest fan of a Dockatot of the Dockatot while she was in the first three months is I think because she was a very refluxy baby, she had reflux. She still kind of does a little bit, but not nowhere near as bad as she did her first three months of life. So I think that had something to do with it as well with if she was lying flat she'd spit up she had to be at kind of an angle to keep her food down so i think that was also another part of the reason that she was not the biggest fan so that goes along with what i said about just having your baby first and really getting to know who they are their likes and their dislikes before you go and buy it unless you got the money to just buy it and then by all means just buy it but if you don't i would play it that way so let's move on to the grand now the grand is a whole other story compared to the deluxe to us so levi loves his grand like this child has slept in that thing every single night besides nights where it had to be washed since we got it since the day we got it he slept in it every night when he would travel like to my mom's house before we lived here, he would bring it with him. Like he always wanted his dock tot. He calls it his pocket tot. <laughs> so it's his pocket tot instead of his dock tot. But he loves it. He uses it every night, every nap. He likes to bring it out in the living room and watch TV in it sometimes. If he sees a sister laying in it, he wants to bring his over and lay in it next to her. He likes that they match, all of that. And I believe, personally, that if we would have had the deluxe with Levi when he was a baby, he would have loved it. So that's what I mean with just knowing your child, knowing him, and just seeing how he was then, he would have loved the Dockatot. But his grand, he loves it. I think the grand is 100% worth it. Just because it's, it's something... Toddlers are finicky and toddlers are funny about things, so... Like if you travel, some toddlers won't sleep very well because they're not in a comfortable spot. It doesn't have the same smells. It doesn't have the same feel. But if you have that Dockatot, you can bring it anywhere you go and they'll feel comfortable because it's, you're bringing their bed with them. It's good for helping him to not fall out of the bed because before we got it, he's been in a big boy bed for a while and he went from a toddler bed to an actual big boy bed. And he's fallen out of it a couple times now. But with his Dockatot, he doesn't fall out of the bed anymore. He feels safe. He feels secure. We can bring it places and he's comfortable no matter where we go. He uses it to lounge around during the day. He likes having something that his sister has as well. So it's just, he he loves his Dockatot. And I would 100% buy it again. I really want to get the Grand for Allison. I think the Grand... Every parent should have a grand, in my opinion, just because of how much toddlers love them. Like, another one thing, like, if you can afford to buy it, I would buy it because they are, they're just so convenient. They are such a convenient thing to have, and it's, it's fun for the toddler, at least for Levi. Like, the day he got it, he was so excited, and he slept in that first night, and he loves to talk about it. 
He likes if you go and lay in it with him. He likes being able to move it around and put it on the floor. Like, a few, a few days ago, he decided that he wanted to sleep in this big cardboard box that we had. And so he put his Dockatot in the cardboard box and slept in the cardboard box in the Dockatot. Like, it, just, it gives him so much more freedom to explore and just do fun things that kids would do. And not to mention, like, with Allison, like, if she has one. Because I, I really, really do think I am going to end up getting her a grand. It's something that I'm going to have to save up for, but I do want her to have it. And you can use it, like, on the floor as a toddler bed. And you can use it in your bed. I mean, it's we have a king bed now, so it would probably fit in between us, but... Like when we're trying to wean her out of being in a crib and going into a toddler bed, like you can use the dog tot as a bed. It'll be something you can take to travel and just something to make her feel safe and secure. And like I said, I'm going to be using the deluxe to wean her out of movement for sleep. So having that grand will just make that transition so much more seamless because it's one less thing I have to wean her off of because she'll be able to use that until she doesn't want to use it anymore. So... The Grand, yes, I think is 100% worth it. It's good for when the babies start being able to crawl and sit and move around. You can sit them in the Grand and you don't have to worry about like if they fall backwards, it's not going to hurt their head and it's going to be soft and it's going to be cushioned. You can put it like in a little gated area and have them be in a comfortable place to play. It's just, I think the Grand is worth it. I think the deluxe is worth it for some babies, and I think it's worth it later in their infancy rather than the beginning, at least in my case. Some babies, 100% it's worth it from the first day, but the grand, I think it would honestly be worth it for any child. I, don't, I could not see any toddler, older infant to toddler, not liking a Doc Todd grand. So, if you are thinking about getting the grand, I would do it. And I think that's it for my review on both of them. So as you can tell, I don't dislike either of them. I really do like both of them. I love their look. I love their function and functionality. I love what they stand for and what they're supposed to do. Allison just wasn't a fan in the beginning, but she's becoming a fan. She's being converted into a Daka Totter. <laughs> so... Yeah, just take what I say and go and watch other reviews of the Dockatot because like I said, every parent's review is going to be different because every baby is different. You can't take what I say and just be like, oh, my kid's going to not like the Dockatot when she's a newborn, so I'm not going to get it. And you can't watch another person and say, oh my gosh, this person's child loved the Dockatot since the first day and they've been sleeping through the night since the first day they came home. So my child will do that too. You can't do it either way. So what I would do is I would just watch as many Dockatot reviews as you can, come together with your husband and just really think about it and decide if it is something you want to do. Like really ponder on it and if, if you want it, get it. If you want to wait until they're born, wait until they're born. If you want to wait until you need it, wait until you need it. Like just do it however it's going to work for you. But for me, the Grand is 100% worth it, and the Deluxe is worth it for my child later. So, I hear my baby crying again. She was crying. I fed her, and she's tired, so I'm going to go help her out and my sister because I know she doesn't like being stuck with her when she's screaming. So, I hope you guys liked this review, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys later.